All right, boys, welcome back to JJDL. This time, week two against Leo, who you can check out in the top right hand corner or down in the description below. Last week, week one, which you can also check out in the top right hand corner, unfortunately, we played very bad. <laughs> it was not a good showing from us. I forgot Taunt didn't work on Magic Bounce, and we got destroyed by Espeon. It was not fun. I'm looking to bounce back against Leo this week, and I went back on what I said in week one. I actually did run mocks for this because I've been obviously in a little bit of a slump and I don't like losing. So we're going to try our best to pick up a win here. I only did two mocks, so it wasn't anything crazy, but shout out to Obo for those. Shout out to Owen and Keegan for a couple of ideas on the team. But before all that, though, did you know that only 47% of the people that watch my videos are subscribed? I'm not going to take up too much of your time, man, but it helps a lot. If you're not subscribed already, please do. We're just going to jump right in here and break down Leo's team. Leo's team consists of Corviknight. Azumarill, Roaring Moon, Rotom Heat, Shaman, Clodzire, Terra Lycanroc Dusk, Aloma Lola, Hisuian Zoroark, Medicham, and Cricketune. The mod that I think is the best matchup into us is going to be that Terra Lycanroc, in my opinion, probably Terra Fighting with the combination of Sword Stance, Stone Edge, Close Combat, and Acelerock, but there's a couple of other options he could go. He could go Steel to resist our Rillaboom's Grassy Glide, and obviously he could just go Rock and do as much damage to us as possible because our Steel type is going to be Orthworm. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, before we break down Leo's team, I made some transactions because my team sucks. <laughs> it's very, very slow. And I don't like that. So we made some transactions for some speed that I'll talk about a little bit next week. So be on the lookout for that. This will be the last time that we will see a couple of the guys on our team right now. All right, let's go top to bottom. As far as a Pokemon on Leo's team, obviously, I said Lycanroc already does good. Corviknight's very difficult for us to break. I think it definitely comes. I think it's going to be Spadef for the Earth's Luna Blood Moon, because it's one of the only Pokemon that can actually check Earth's Luna Blood Moon. We can set up in his face, but he could be something like Iron Defense, Roost, Body Press, and like Taunt if he wanted to do that, because we don't have a Ghost type, and he could push past us eventually, and it's very, very frustrating. Azumarill is another Pokemon that I think comes. I think maybe AV. I could see Belly Drum, but it doesn't make the most sense, I think, whenever I have a Rillaboom. And it's also very hard for that Pokemon to get set up. So I think AV makes some sense. He could also be Bandit. He could be Scarf. Just a defensive piece this week would be very, very nice. Could even be Wakan Berry. Ugh. Roaring Moon makes our life very difficult. It's very hard for us to play into Roaring Moon with a Fairy-type Wigglytuff. The obvious counterplay is going to be Fairy-type into our Raging Bolt, but also Iron Hands has some capability of checking it most of the time. I think more so I expect a Pivot than a Dragon Dance Sweeper this game. I think like U-Turn, Stomping Tantrum, Outrage, and then Filler Move does really, really well. If he wants to go Dragon Dance with Booster Energy, I don't think that's crazy. I think that definitely makes sense, but I think the Pivot's probably better in my opinion. Rotom Heat, I don't really expect to come. I think we have a couple of different things to beat it. Ursuluna Blood Moon's gonna be the first one, Raging Bolt again, and then obviously Iron Hands doesn't care about it too much other than the Willow Burn, so I don't really see Rotom Heat coming, but it does have some use. Shaman's very difficult for us to deal with, actually. A good Spadef Shaman uh, can check potentially our Raging Bolt, does really well into our Rillaboom. I think a good Spadef Shaman's gonna come here and make our life very difficult. Something like Synthesis, Seed Flare, Dazzling Gleam, and Air Slash makes a lot of sense to me. A Spadef Clodzire also, in my opinion, makes a ton of sense for our Raging Bolt. I think it really puts the hurt on us, and obviously T-Spikes are gonna be very good into the team that we have. So. T-Spikes on Clodzire are probably coming very likely, and I think just a Spadef Clodzire makes our life very difficult. Like in Rock Dusk, I already said, I think it's probably going to come. Loma Lola, do not see that Pokemon coming. It does not add value here. I have Rillaboom, Hands, Raging Bolt. Even Ursula Blood Moon can do a little bit too much damage to it, so I really don't see a Loma Lola coming. Hisuian Zoroark, while its stabs are good into me, I think that there are six better Pokemon, namely the top six Pokemon on this team. If there's a Pokemon that comes over, it's probably going to be Azu, but Azu stops Dracos. Hisuian Zoroark's not very strong. He could bring it, but I think there are six better Pokemon. And then Medicham and Cricketomb will lump them together. They don't count as Pokemon. I don't see either of them coming. We have good counterplay to Medicham with our Psychic type being Mew. And then Cricketomb could come, but if we have we have removal and Blastoise, and I think Blastoise is very likely to come here, so I don't really see it. And webs also don't really help with our team because our team's very slow, and the Pokemon that aren't slow don't care about webs. Rillaboom obviously has Grassy Glide for priority. Mew could care about it a little bit, but it's probably going to be more utility with the makeup of my team. And then Iron Jugulus obviously is flying, so it doesn't care about those sticky webs. So the six that I think he's going to bring are going to be Corviknight, Shaman, Roaring Moon, Azumarill, Clodzire, and Lycanroc Dusk. As for the team we're bringing, 
I sat down and I thought about it. I obviously made finals in three leagues in a row, and then I haven't made playoffs in two leagues in a row, which is like an anomaly for me to do it even once and then twice in a row is crazy. So I sat down, I thought about it. What am I doing wrong? I am playing passive, way too passive. Week one, I realized this and I was like, hey, we're gonna get an Ursula and a Blood Moon early and we're gonna do damage. I did not do that. <laughs> I just simply failed to do that. So I'm going to force myself to do that this week with the first Pokemon we have on our team. It's gonna be Raging Bolt. It's gonna be Terra Dragon. Shout out to my friend Jason for changing me from Terra Ground to Terra Dragon because his team lacks a Draco switch in. The only switch in on his team is gonna be Azumarill, in which case we could probably just both switch on that Pokemon and do a ton of damage and scout for either the Wakan or the Assault Vest. We're gonna be booster special attack to quite literally try to force a KO turn one. There is very few situations in which we do not force a KO turn one. It's like we Draco on the Claude Zire as he recovers maybe, and then we get the minus two. He's unaware, so he has to switch out. He goes like Shaman and he still takes a massive chunk. That's like the only situation I could really see us not forcing a KO, but at worst, we force a ton of damage. We're simply gonna be four attacks. We've got Volt Switch, Thunderclap, Thunderbolt and Draco Meteor. Draco Meteor is extremely spammable. Thunderbolt to break through something like the Azumarill if it's a little bit chipped, or the Core of Night, Thunderclap for the Zoroark Kasui or the Lycanroc Dusk, and then Volt Switch for Momentum. We have 152 defense, we're 136 special attack modest, we have 164 special defense, then we have 64 speed. 56, why do I? <laughs> This lets us outspeed a max adamant Azu, and that's important because we also have the defense to live a play rough from a potential Scarf or Jolly Azumarill, which is nice because then we can trade a Volt Switch and do a ton of damage, potentially KO that Pokemon. We live a Specs Hisuian Zoroark Hyper Beam from full, and this is just to allow us to pretty much never get KO'd turn one. There is almost no situation in which turn one we get o would and we try to force a KO. And this Pokemon does have late game usage as well, obviously, with both Thunderclap and Volt Switch. It can be used as a pivot with its great defensive typing. Even just once we Terra, if we get the Dragon typing off, and we decide to Draco turn one, that's fine too, because Dragon is a great defensive typing in this matchup. Braiku here is gonna try to show, hey, I'm a broken Terra Captain, and this is why this week. Your Spadef wall with ground type, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna click Draco. And the next up, we're gonna have more of a pivot this week. He doesn't do that great in the matchup, but I do like having the Grassy Glide ability because the Zoom World does exist, obviously, with Aqua Jet. I want some way to combat that. So we're gonna be Rillaboom next. We're gonna be Heavy Duty Boots because I very much so anticipate T-Spikes, and this is our best way around it. And I also think this is gonna be the Pokemon that gets switched in the most. So being able to switch in and not take potential T-Spikes or Spikes damage from that Cloud Zire or even Stealth Rocks is gonna be very nice. We're just gonna be U-turn, Grassy Glide, Wood Hammer, and Knock Off. There's not very many good resist to Wood Hammer, and those that do resist don't enjoy getting knocked off, specifically the Rotom and the Corviknight. The Corviknight might be Rocky Helmet. If we knock that off, we make the rest of our Pokemon's lives easier. And then we have Wood Hammer. Obviously, it does a ton of damage to Rotom Heat. Not really Corviknight, but we're here to do damage and mostly to be a pivot. We're 104 HP, max attack adamant, four defense, and then the rest into speed. This lets us outspeed a 24 speed Shaman, and then we just hit as hard as we can. There's no specific benchmarks I wanted to hit with this. I just wanted to use this grassy terrain for the rest of our team. I wanted to heal the rest of our team up, and I wanted to have a pivot. And it also forces Roaring Moon to run Stomp and Cantrum and not Earthquake. It'll probably do that anyway, obviously, because that's in prep, but it'll be cool to punish him if he does decide to bring Earthquake. Next up, we have our only resemblance of Roaring Moon counterplay at all, because we didn't go Terra Fairy on the Raging Bolt, because I wanted to be offensive this week, we have Iron Hands. Iron Hands is very important this week. Not only does it have the capability to check Roaring Moon, and it can switch it on that and be a good pivot because we have Rocky Helmet. You can take some Rocky Helmet chip as he U-turns out, but in general, this Pokemon has three moves that are very difficult to switch into. Drain Punch, Thunder Punch, and Ice Punch. We also have Sword Stance to boost our attack, and the fact that we are so fat is gonna make this a very difficult Pokemon for our opponent to deal with. And we went Ice Punch over Earthquake because it hits both the Clod and the Shaman and it too it KO'd the Clod Zire if he was Spud Def anyway, and neither Ice Punch nor the Earthquake to it KO'd if he was Fizz Def. For 100 HP, 128 attack, or max defense with an impish nature, and then we went the rest into speed. We can live a plus one adamant booster outrage from the Roaring Moon after two layers of spikes. And this is very important because I do think if he is a Dragon Dance set that this is a very likely situation. He could be Dragon Dance, he could be adamant, and he could be booster energy. All of which, very bad for my team. Outrage is very free if he doesn't think I'm going to bring Terra Fairy Raging Bolt, or even if he does, if he's able to deal with it in some way. Outrage is free. 
so I don't see him not bringing that. We have some speed for the Azumarill, and then we just went the rest into attack. Again, this Pokemon is here for the Roaring Moon, but it can also be used very well as a breaker. And then next up, this Mon, I'm not sure about this set. I cooked a little bit with this. We'll see how it goes. I decided, hey man, might as well bring something cool, right? Like it could work, it could not work. We have Ursula Blood Moon, and we're gonna be Grassy Seed with Taunt, Moonlight, Calm Mind, and Hyper Voice. I got in such a rut with this Blood Moon. I worked on this set by far the most out of all of the sets. And I was like, I just can't figure out how to break Corviknight. I went through so many different situations. I was like, well, if we get hazard stuff, we could be specs and then we could break past it that way, but we can't use Blood Moon twice in a row. So that's gonna be a little bit tough, but we can obviously, you know, run him out of Roost. But then if he's pressure, we run out of Blood Moon. So I went in this big cycle. I went through a lot of different sets. I ended on this one because Grassy Sea gives us the defense boost, which is very nice because then Terra fighting Life Orb, Lycanroc Dust cannot Oko us with uh, close combat, obviously. And then we have Taunt and we're very fast to try to taunt that Corp Knight prevent it from not only body or uh, excuse me, iron defensing, but also roosting. The only downside with this is the fact that if he is just U-Torn, you you torn you turn Corviknight, it's going to be very hard for us to potentially break that. And that was the thing that I was running into with Mox. This Ursula Blood Moon, it's still very fat. It was still able to claim like one. But then if the Corviknight came in and I taunted it, it just U-turned into the Shaman and killed me in the terrain. So we have to be conscious of that when we're playing. But I think if we can position ourselves to where the Shaman is low or the Shaman's gone or we're in the last turn of grassy terrain, that this set can do very, very well. We have 8 HP, 84 defense, 100 special attack modest, 88 special defense, and 228 speed. We're very speedy Ursula Blood Moon. And this is so we can outspeed a Corviknight creeping a 12 speed Blast Orbs. Is he going to be that fast? Probably not. But it's better safe than sorry in this situation where the whole game plan relies on outspeeding that potential Corviknight. We can live two Adamant Outrages from the Roaring Moon at plus one. I think that was at plus one. That might have been neutral. We live a Shaman Seed Flare if we're non-boosted, not in the terrain, after a spike, and then we went the rest into Special Attack Mods. This is going to be kind of where we aim to go with the in-game. If there's no Shaman, that it opens up a lot with this Pokemon, unless he's fast Corviknight, which is definitely very possible. Uh, but it opens up a lot if there's no Shaman or if we can deal with the Shaman, which isn't the easiest Pokemon for us to deal with. But to get into the position that I want to get in with this Pokemon, we have to keep that Shaman in check. Next up, I wanted Rocks, so we... Uh... We brought a rocker, we brought Mew. We got Stealth Rock, we've got Will-O-Wisp to burn the Roaring Moon, as well as the Azumarill. Uh, we've got U-Turn for Momentum, and then we have the Play Rough to try to catch the Roaring Moon off guard. We're gonna be Culver Berry if he is a setup potential Roaring Moon and he's not Roselli Berry, he's probably gonna be Booster. Uh, we can obviously catch him off guard, we can live a plus one Adam and Booster knockoff, and we can KO in return with the Play Rough. Obviously, this is contingent on keeping Mew healthy, which might not happen, but if for whatever reason, Roaring Moon might be his initial switch into Mew because he doesn't know what type of Mew we're gonna be. So if that's the case, I can play rough and I can try to catch him off guard if he's not a pivot, or rather he's a setup threat. We're gonna be 64 HP, 20 attack, 148 defense impish, 248 special defense, and 28 speed. I like rocks here, to be completely honest. I like Rocks a lot because his only removal is Corviknight and he's shouldn't he shouldn't really run Defog. I really debated just being three hazard Mew with T Spike to force the Cloud Zyre and Spikes to punish things and Stealth Rock to punish more things. I, I worded that very poorly, but I think Rocks is ultimately the best hazard into him, so I decided to go with the Stealth Rocks. We Mew doesn't really have too much of a purpose here. It can kind of just like take a hit. The Cold Bear helps with like a crunch from Lycanroc too. If that's the case, we can like take a hit throw off a willow on the mini physical attackers that we are facing and maybe we'll get rocks up who knows and then the last mod i struggled with a lot but i ultimately landed on iron jugu list because of the fact that shaman did us so dirty i thought i was very underprepared for shaman so jugu was the best thing that we had for that i like blastoise a lot for the spin but at this point we're just going to kind of have to deal with the t-spike we're going to be boots because rocks are definitely a possibility we're top for the cloud zyre u-turn for momentum hurricane and dark pulse for stabs we're going to be 104 special attack 212 speed and 192 speed timid we have enough speed to outspeed everything on his team that we can max speed timid shaman we can live two shaman if he's max special attack dazzling gleams and then we went the rest into special attack again i don't think juku does the best here but it's kind of a stall breaker in a way it can taunt on the cloud zyre taunt on the aloe if he does decide to bring it and he can kind of rip through the team otherwise we can even taunt the corviknight but primarily this is here because we struggled so much dealing with the shaman 
And that is going to be the team, guys. The name of the game this week is to just maintain offensive control. It's a little bit difficult, and we have to play very cautiously around that Roaring Moon. But if we can do that, I do think we will be able to pick up the win here. And hopefully move on to one and one and get out of this slump is what I'm hoping. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. signing off. That we have 64 speed. 56. Why do I? <laughs> we have 56 speed. I can't. I can't get it in one go.